Antoine Staley, he writes for the New York Daily News, and he covers the New York Jets. Let's bring him in right now on the Harbor One Hotline. Antoine, thanks a lot for joining us. I'm curious, this team, we heard we played some sound of Robert Sala talking about how maybe they're too young to be caught up in like losing 13 straight to New York. Is that sort of like the, the Patriots, rather? Is that the message that you're hearing out of that locker room they don't remember, you know, six years ago, five years ago? Well, I think a lot of these players are really young. Thanks for having me too. Like y'all, y'all having a good time. Oh yeah. <laughs> but uh, um, but uh, like to go back to your point, a lot of these players weren't even on the team, so they they don't really don't care about what happened in 2017 or some big loss or whatever the case may be. You know, they care about what happened like three weeks ago when they felt like they let the game slip away, where they felt like they were leading at halftime 10 to 6 and everything just kind of fell apart. And you talked about Zach Wilson and, you know, you compare him to Matt Jones, but you know what, Matt Jones, you know, he got sacked six times in that game and, you know, he kept his composure and, you know, helped his team lead lead him to a victory um, three weeks ago at MetLife Stadium. So, I mean, Zach Wilson, he's still it's it's about maturity and like learning when just it's okay to throw the ball away and not just make dumb mistakes and I think he's still learning that and just the lack of consistency that's what worries me about Zach Wilson compared to Matt Jones who you know Zach may have a higher ceiling but at least with Matt you don't get necessarily the boneheaded plays from time to time so I think that's the difference yeah. yeah, well, you're not like not like Zach has. Like, I mean, no, yeah, I, I think this. He's I think that's a real difference. Two years of plays. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> He's got, right, right, yeah. Antoine. All right, so hold on. So stay, let's stay on uh, Zach Wilson just for a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so how do you, okay, you, and how do you think the rest of the fans view Zach Wilson? Not from a playing perspective, but from a just a a, a douchery perspective. <laughs> personality. We'll say personality. Sure. Wow. So I, I don't know if you heard the clip yesterday where uh, he kind of took a shot at the media. Yep. Like we were right, right yeah. there. And yeah, I mean, he, that's kind of my he point. He, is that a reporter yeah, says, that people like or is he like somebody that everybody rolls their eyes at? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I can't say exactly how I feel, but I, I'll say okay. this. Like, you he just is, did. He, yeah. He's. Yeah, he'll. I'll say this: like he is a guy that I feel like he he said he doesn't listen to the criticism, but obviously he does with the answer that he gave, which had nothing to do with the what the question was. Which I feel like okay, you, you're you're upset that you're getting this criticism, but you have to realize this is New York area. Like you're gonna get criticism, especially with a team that a lot of people feel like can win now. So. You don't be mad at us. Be mad at yourself because you didn't necessarily play very well. You threw three interceptions. Like you have to understand like what the situation is. So you know he he feels slighted that people are criticizing him for that one particular game. Robert Sala also feels like that we're being a little bit too hard on him because of four or five plays in the game. But the fact of the matter is he cost himself. It cost the Jets the game like three weeks ago. They they scored ten points off of turnovers. That's that's the difference in a five point game. You know you can sum it up how you want to, but. But, you know, he needs to play better. He needs to be more consistent and play like how he did against Buffalo, not how he played against the Patriots. We were running through all the different quarterbacks that the Jets have had, even since 2015. And so do you get the sense there that the way that things are going this season so far, that the Jets feel like they have their franchise quarterback for the next several seasons, at least uh, with Zach Wilson, or are they going to be looking outside once again? Well, well, hey, Meg, it's nice to finally talk to you because yes, we have a love for ludicrous too. Uh, like so, but <laughs> anyway, uh, anyway, back to the question. Like, yeah, they feel they feel like they do. They feel like Zach Wilson is the quarterback of the future. They they feel very confident in that. Like even in the preseason when you know he was injured and they thought, well, you know, he might be out for you know possibly several months. That they didn't look anywhere. They felt like you know he could come back pretty quickly and stuck with. You know, Joe Flacco, and they went one and two, and they felt like Zach would give them the best chance to win. And, you know, despite some of the plays that she's made throughout the course of the season that, you know, they are five and one with him, you know, in the lineup, that one blemish worth against the Patriots. So, you know, they feel like he's going to continue to grow and grow and develop, and they feel like they can surround him with enough talent that they're able to win. And, you know, so far so good. They are six and three at the moment and have an opportunity to, to lead the AFC East if they ever to to get a victory there, but I think the jury's still out if he can be a franchise franchise quarterback for this team. Talking to Antoine Staley, he covers the New York Jets, the New York Daily News, and Antoine, when Bryce uh, a hall, a hall went down, it was like, man, I mean, he was starting to get into the groove. It seemed like he was kind of like the offense, almost protecting Zach Wilson, but I look at last week's game against Buffalo and look like Michael Carter, James Robinson combined to run the ball well. Is that still the recipe for this team to win games? 
Yeah, Brees Hall. You Brees mean Hall, like sorry. Bryce Hall? You kind of uh, confused me there. Bryce Hall is the corner, but yeah, yeah Brees Hall. Yeah, uh, yeah, that, that's still the recipe. I think you saw that against the game against Buffalo, where you know they they felt like the, the running they could the running game could take pressure off of Zach Wilson, and you know have a guy like James Robinson who's run for over a thousand yards in this league, and you know end up running for over eight hundred yards his second year before suffering the Achilles injury. You know, it's definitely going to take a lot of pressure off Wilson, and also have a Michael Carter who I thought had arguably his best game as a, as a pro against the Buffalo Bills last week. And we know how great their defense is and, you know, was able to run down, run that team down to the point where they almost, they, they score a game when they touch down instead of a field goal that, you know, the, the Bills don't even have an opportunity to try to at least tie it at the end. So, yeah, I think that's the recipe to success for them. It's sort of like the Rex Ryan teams back in the day, like 2009, 2010, they want to play great defense. They want to play very sound on special teams and they want to have the quarterback, you know, not try not to lose the game for them, but also, you know, don't feel like he has to do a lot in order to win the game for him too as well. So, um, Antoine, I'm just looking at the, you know, the coaches, all the coaches um, before Robert Sala, and it's a mixed bag of personalities and resumes, <laughs> right? But none of them have a record, a winning record above 500 uh, other than Al Groh from 2000. That, so I just looking at Robert Sala, do you guys feel like you found the answer, right? You know, so there's a, there's been the hard old coach like Rex Ryan, you know, and the wannabe Eric Mangini's of the world and the weirdo Adam Gase of the world. But where does Robert Sala kind of fit <laughs> within, within the hierarchy of all these coaches? Oh, well, well, I covered Adam Gase in Miami, so, yeah, I definitely can account for the weirdo part. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think Sala is a little bit different just because uh, – you, you feel like he has a plan in place. Like, I can't speak for all of the guys, although, I, like I said, I covered from, like, maybe co- covered teams that coached against them. But, you know, obviously, when Adam Gates took over, I mean, after they fired him, like, the roster was just completely in a terrible shape. So it was a bad situation when Sala came in, and him and Joe Douglas pretty much had to tear everything down and build this roster back up. And to be able to do that within, you know, two years to the point where they even, they're just competing you know, in these games and have a chance to make the playoffs, I think it's truly astonishing. Just simply because uh, Gase, you know, his last year they were two and fourteen, and now you know Sala they they won four games last year. They've already won six. I imagine they're probably going to at least win eight or nine, and you know, continue, just like I say, just to have an opportunity to, to compete for the playoffs. You know, I think it says a lot about him and what Joe Douglas is doing. I think that you know, until you make the playoffs, especially that's what it's all about in New York you know, winning and winning at a high level and making the playoffs, then the jury's still out. But I think it's a good start for him in year two when I think a lot of people were questioning, was he the right man for the job? And Antoine, of course, that win over the Bills was so tremendous. What What is the team's, I guess, atmosphere in the locker room and around them now coming off of beating that team with Josh Allen? They, they don't want surprise at all. Like, they, they expected to come in there and win, and when everybody thought, oh, well, there's no way they could beat this team, especially when, you know, they, they coming off the gauss against the Patriots, everybody thought, you know, I thought that would be the game they would win. I thought they would beat the Patriots then, lose against the Bills, and we'll see after the bye week against New England once again. But, yeah, this team really believes it, and they really believe in his message, especially with, you know, Robert Sala after the loss against Baltimore to begin the year. He talked about taking receipts, and I know a lot of people joked about that, whether it be, you know, fan base in Miami and, you know, up there in New England and, you know, Buffalo, but, you know, the team rallied around that. They really believe that, you know, Salah has their back and once, you know, feels like this is a team, they're not the same old Jets that they used to be. And the players believe that, the coaches believe that, and they all they're trying to they're finally put that up on mm-hmm. the field and we'll see how it goes. But yeah, right now they really believe that, you know, this regime and the Jets and they're certainly playing like it right now. All right, Antoine, last one for me. Antoine Staley covers the Jets with the New York Daily News. A huge game. We're talking about for the Patriots, for both teams. Pats cannot lose this game and go to five and five in my opinion. But a huge game for the Jets. I think you win this game in New England. You got a two game lead over the Pats, win the tiebreaker. All you gotta do is get in the top seven. How do you see this game playing out here on Sunday? Well, really, it's going to come down to which quarterback, you know, doesn't make the mistakes. Yeah, really. I mean, we kind of saw that in the first game there where I think the first half, Matt Jones was get, making mistakes and getting set. And, you know, Zach Wilson was able to limit that. And then the second half is really, you know, they turn, they both flipped around. And if the Patriots can stop the Jets running game, and I imagine Bill Belichick is going to have Zach Wilson beat him or try to beat him, then I think that's the big key there. If they can't slow down the running game, 
and the Jets are able to, you know, run all over them, then, you know, it's going to be a long day for that Pacers defense. I expect the most uh, another close game, probably going to come down to a field goal, maybe like a 2017 score either way. And, you know, I, I definitely think it's going to be another slugfest, especially with the two teams playing so well defensively. All right, Antoine, thanks a lot, man. We appreciate you taking the time and giving some insight in the New York Jets. Appreciate it. Thanks, right, man. Thank all. all right, you got it.